Hey guys, Isaac here, and this is a fully 3D printed camera rig I designed from scratch to fit my very needs to turn my small mirrorless camera into a professional rig for running gun filmmaking, as well as for professional shoots. I've been obsessing over a way to put everything I need onto a small and light rig so that I can carry it practically everything I need for this camera right on the rig itself. It's been many failed prints and several months in the making, and I'm really excited to share this thing with all of you today. So why are rigs important? Camera rigs are an essential tool for filmmakers and content creators. They provide stability, control, and flexibility, allowing us to capture those smooth cinematic shots. Whether you're shooting a documentary, a vlog, or even a short film, having a well-designed camera rig can significantly enhance the production value of your content. But more importantly, make it easier for you as a filmmaker to be prepared for every situation on a video shoot. So why did I make a rig? As someone who's passionate about creating high quality videos, I wanted to take my production game to the next level. That's why I decided to build my camera rig. For me, a rig was all about bringing everything I needed with me. Specifically, my microphone, an extra SD card. I also wanted to give this tiny camera an actual grip to carry comfortably for hours at a time. It might sound silly, but I also wanted something to make this small camera look more professional. And I think this rig does achieve it. What can I say? Looks do matter. Now, you might be wondering why I chose to 3D print my camera rig. Well, there are a few reasons. First, 3D printing allows for incredible customization options. I could design and print specific parts that perfectly fit my camera and its accessories. This is huge because my camera got discontinued after only a few months, so there are no accessories for it at all, even aftermarket accessories. This means I can't even begin to make a rig for this camera unless I buy one of those huge universal cage mounts. And not only do they not look that professional in my opinion, but they're also quite expensive. This, it's a cost-effective solution compared to purchasing a pre-built rig, especially if you already own a 3D printer. That being said, there are ways to print your designs even if you do not own a 3D printer. Oftentimes cities have media labs that have 3D printers you can use, or if you're a student, many high schools or colleges across the country have printers if you know how to ask around. Finally, 3D printing gives me flexibility to iterate and improve the design over time, adapting it to future camera setups. Now, it might come as a surprise to everyone, but this cage system for this camera only cost me $3.39. For this build, I decided to use PETG plastic because of its mix of material characteristics, but in hindsight, PETG might not have been the best choice. I'll get to that later, but PETG has heat resistance and strength but it's also easy to print and affordable. It's more flexible than PLA filament, meaning if the rig is set down roughly or something and it bends, it's more likely to bend and fail rather than shatter and fail like PLA. But by far the most important reason for housing being PETG filament was the heat resistance. PLA is easy to print because of its low glass transition temperature. In short, this means PLA very quickly loses its strength and becomes malleable after being in the sun. That is not something you want to happen to your rig holding thousands of dollars worth of camera equipment. Not fun. PETG solves this problem because of its higher glass transition temperature. So why might it have been a mistake? Well, the rig does have some flex to it. I'm not sure if this flex is quite a good thing or a bad thing, because I can see it being a benefit in some situations, but a nuisance in others. If I did it over again, I might have chosen a material like ASA because it has that heat resistance, but it's still stiff like PLA. Hopefully this would get rid of the flexing problem. Now let's dive into the build process, shall we? The first step was designing the rig using a CAD software. I measured my camera and its accessories, ensuring a price fit between all of them. Once I had the design ready, it was time to fire up the 3D printer. After several hours of printing, I had all the individual parts ready to go. Now assembling the rig is like putting together a puzzle. All the parts are 3D printed, even the bolts to hold them all together. The beauty of 3D printing is that if anything didn't quite fit together perfectly, I could easily just make adjustments in CAD and reprint the parts. Here's how I put it together. First, I put the cage on it and screwed in the cold shoe and tightened down the cold shoe. I didn't want to mount anything to the rear screw on the back for a couple of reasons. One, I couldn't afford to block the door on the bottom of the camera where you access the battery and the SD card but I also still wanted to mount the rig to tripods and other accessories. 
Then the handle can be secured on the side using the 3D printed bolts. And finally, the top handle can be added to finish off the rig. Once the rig was fully assembled, it was time to attach my microphone and other accessories. The rig's modular design allowed for me to mount additional components such as an external microphone or even a smartphone holder. For me, putting a battery bank in the handle and then running a wire to my microphone to power it in one of the cold shoe mounts is a great way to go. And then attaching maybe a Rode Wireless Go here for wireless audio is an excellent setup. Another thing I've used quite frequently is putting a iPhone on top of the camera so I have two different angles so I don't miss any special moments at live events. Now how has this 3D printed camera rig performed to me? Well I've got to say it's been quite helpful so far. The fact that I always have a microphone on means I'm never without good audio and the solar power bank can simply power the microphone forever using the power of the sun. Furthermore, the ability to tweak and modify the rig based on my evolving requirements is a huge advantage. If I ever upgrade my camera or add new accessories, I can simply design and print new parts to accommodate those accessories. It's a level of adaptability and change that traditional camera rigs just can't match. Now I must emphasize that building a camera rig from scratch isn't for everyone. If you don't have access to a 3D printer or the necessary design skills, there are plenty of pre-built options available on the market. Well, if you have a more popular camera than me, that is. However, if you're someone who loves to tinker, make things, and customize your gear, 3D printing a camera rig can be a fun project that has real implications. That's it for today's video. If you have any questions or need advice on building your own camera rig, feel free to ask away in the comments. Keep learning, keep exploring, and keep creating.